so the last day of this year, uh, I have to leave. Minasan konnichiwa, makai zaku desu. Welcome back to the channel, or if you're just joining, welcome. So this video acts as a pretty significant update. If you've been following along with my channel, uh, I do apologize. The timeline has been a little jumpy, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, that's because, um, to this point, I'll be honest, I've been living in Fukuoka for just over a year. I arrived in September, late September of 2023. Now, it's mid-October 2024. And if you've been watching a couple of my videos, they're still from, well, later last year and earlier of this year, 2024, getting into January, February, and moving from there. But a couple other videos have been ahead of that even. I took the JLPT in July of 2024, which was a few months ago. Uh, I posted a video shortly after taking that. So uh, I had been videos from last year and then jumped ahead to July, middle of this year. And now I moved back, uh, I think to December and then January, and I may have jumped ahead again and then back. So I do sincerely apologize that it is quite confusing. But to be honest, it's difficult uh, to, to keep up uh, with everything and make things relevant and make things interesting. I'm trying to have a story a little bit to carry along with, mostly about, of course, my life and my updates, uh, but also about what you might experience if you were to be in the same boat as me. I'd like to show you what it's really like living in Japan, of course, from my point of view, being a student studying Japanese for the past year. Which brings me to my first point about what this update is about. But before I get into that, uh, you may have noticed that I've surpassed uh, a thousand subscribers on this channel, which is fantastic. So thank you to all of you sincerely and deeply. Uh, it was my goal to at least reach a thousand subscribers within a year. And I think I just made it. I'm not exactly sure when I posted my first video uh, about this series, about me relocating to Japan. Um, I think it was early October of 2023, maybe. I'd have to double check, but it was pretty much almost right on the year. Um, so I finally made that. So thank you uh, very much for that. Um, the channel's just starting, got a lot of ideas ca coming. Um, and I guess, before I get into my first point, I should probably backtrack and have a point zero. <laughs> uh, because what I want to say is that the channel has been kind of, you know, doing what it does. <laughs> uh, like I said, I've been a student. I've been putting out content based on what the school has been uh, presenting and doing for us. Uh, that's what some of my tour videos are about that you'll see. We go on a lot of culture trips with the school. Um, and then there's just my daily life kind of stuff that I might post, things that I've been up to. But there's a big chunk of things that haven't been shown to you yet, which, like I said, I apologize for, um, such as um, moving into this apartment, uh, for example. Starting work, uh, which I've posted a couple of videos about. The JLPT, which I did post about as well. But there's a few other things that I'm going to be covering and they're going to be coming very soon, I promise. I know a lot of people have been asking about them. I do apologize. But good things are coming. Some interesting things are still on the horizon. So again, thank you to all of you for subscribing to my channel. Uh, it makes me very happy uh, that you've come and joined this journey. I love all your comments. I try to respond to every single one. I love engaging uh, with all of you, uh, regardless of what the question is. Uh, my favorite ones are, of course, uh, not only my experiences, but you telling me about what your plans are. What are your future goals? Why do you want to move to Japan? Why do you want to learn the language? What is your long-term and short-term goals uh, for all of that? That's what I find most interesting. Um, and all the same, you've asked me a lot of questions, so I'm hopefully going to get to that uh, material as well. So backtrack to my first point about being a school. <laughs> Being a school, uh, being a language student at a Japanese language school here in Fukuoka for the past year. Uh, I arrived in Japan, in Fukuoka, September 30th, uh, 2023. School started October 2nd, 2023. So I had about two and a half days, give or take, to kind of get uh, my bearings about the city and get right into orientation day of the school, which I've got videos for wherever those cards are. And I guess the first update that I'd like to share with you is that school is over. Awari, it's finished. So I was in a one year program with Genki Jacks here in Fukuoka. I have passed the course, I got my certificate. 
it's right here. And the course ended just at the end of September. Uh, we had a graduation, our Sotsuko Shiki, which was a ceremony where uh, all the students who are graduating for that um, program uh, can come and have a formal uh, ceremony with the teachers and the staff of Genki Jacks. Uh, we get to read a speech. <laughs> Uh, Nihongo de Dake, all in Japanese. And it was fun. It was uh, bittersweet. Of course, I'm happy to be finished. I'm very happy to be finished. And I'll get into that in just a moment. But it's bittersweet. Uh, the students uh, were fun, made some friends along the way, of course. And the teachers are great. Uh, really engaging, really fun. Uh, I highly recommend Genki Jacks if you want to study Japanese. I'm not going to get into review in this video. I'll probably do a separate video for that if you are interested. Uh, let me know. I'll do a full review of my experience at Genki Jacks. But anyway, it was a one-year program. We did about two and a half months and took a break. Two and a half months, took a break. Give or take two months, have a break kind of thing, which is good. It's nice to break it up and have the, that break. When I initially paid for the course, I was kind of disappointed that there were so long, like so many breaks, like long, like three weeks here and almost four weeks there. Uh, but when it came to it, it was <laughs> very much welcomed. Uh, studying Japanese and language in this setting uh, was very taxing uh, on my brain. Uh, just getting worn out and uh, burnt out. <laughs> uh, so many vocabulary, so many structures, so many things coming at you uh, at once, plus self-study, trying to use the language in daily life. It's tricky and I'm not so much a young chap anymore, so the old brain is needs to be re-oiled a little bit. Regardless, as fun as it was, it was uh, draining. Uh, I made a couple of videos too about working. That's the other big key factor. Uh, yes, I am working. Uh, the job that I was talking about in those videos, I did get the job, so I have been working in that position uh, since February. But the thing is, I work at night the majority of the time, if not all the time. Ah, uh, okay, I only work at night. <laughs> Except for my first few uh, training weeks, I guess, at the beginning where I kind of got some daytime uh, to see the operation. Uh, it is a hotel here in Fukuoka uh, and then I moved into being the night manager. So that is my current position and that's what I've had uh, since I started working at the property. So the thing is I work at night. So I work uh, part-time hours under the student visa. You can only work a maximum of 28 hours in a given week and a maximum of eight hours in a given 24 hour period. Uh, so typically I would start work around 10.30 at night and I would finish work around 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. School starts at 9.30, so I'd go straight from work to school, study for four hours. <laughs> school finishes about 1.10 in the afternoon. Then I would come home, kind of unwind, do some tidy up, whatever I have to do. Maybe homework if I need to and try to get to bed as soon as I possibly can so that I can sleep and then go back to work that night. And then wake up around 8.30 and then go to work for 10.30 and then <laughs> finish work around 9 o'clock the next morning and then go to class again from 9.30 to 1.10 and repeat that uh, a couple or a few times a week. Uh, it really messes up your schedule and it really burnt me out uh, pretty quick, unfortunately, because it um, detracted me from focusing on school and studying and doing homework and all that kind of stuff. And also focusing on work. I still had a job to do. I uh, still had to focus and perform and do well. Um, even though the priority is school, my school did not like me working at all. Not that I was working, it was my, um, uh, I guess, attitude, if I can say. Um, I was kind of showing up uh, a little just right on time, if not a, a minute late or so, uh, coming in, just trying to sleep as much as I can to the last minute. If I finished work early, I could come home and take a brief nap and then get to school, literally like a 10, eight to 10 minute nap. I'd come, maybe get changed, refresh a little bit and then zoom right out the door and be kind of showing up uh, at class right before the deadline. But anyway, on the whole, I never missed a day of class until the last month. I was admittedly pretty tired uh, a couple of the days and I didn't have the energy after work uh, to just go to class. So uh, I stayed home. I, I slept instead. Uh, it was better for me. Uh, it was better for my performance, uh, both in school and work, rather than having to just keep running on fumes uh, like I was. So uh, to wrap that update up, <laughs> I was glad, or am glad, that school is over. School has been officially over for about three weeks uh, now. Uh, I'm happy that it's over. Uh, I'm still trying to do my own study. I'm not doing any textbook type of stuff specifically. Uh, I'm still doing a lot of research, watching uh, YouTube videos. Uh, I have friends that I chat with uh, as well that I'm trying to still keep the language alive. Um, of course, 
uh, when I go to shops and go shopping and out and everything like that and whatever else, still trying to keep the language active and alive. Has my Japanese improved? Well, I actually want to make an entire video on that as well. Uh, so my intention that I had fully intended to do, which obviously has not happened as you can see, uh, I actually wanted to make an update every month uh, about my progress and how uh, things are going uh, in life and at school, how my Japanese is actually developing so that I can prove to you uh, as an individual how I'm learning and what my pace has been. And I wanted to make a video every month along the way. Obviously, those videos you have not seen them because I never made them. I never recorded them. Like I said, uh, I've been busy for lack of a better term. Uh, I just didn't make the time to do that. And I can't even catch up on the videos that I recorded six months ago, let alone having a video every month that who knows when you would have seen them. But of course, in hindsight, in retrospect, this still would have been interesting to kind of see that progression, regardless of when they actually come out regardless if it's real time or not, it would still be a progression nonetheless. Uh, but to this point, has my Japanese improved? Yes, of course, it definitely has. Uh, it's not leaps and bounds like maybe some other students or maybe you might experience, uh, but it's better. Uh, am I completely happy with where it is? No, of course not, it can always be better. I'm glad I have the skills that I have and I'm learning as I go along, uh, but you know, step by step. Anihongo o benkyo suzukimasu. So on that point, I also want to say, you know, kudos to all the uh, creators and vloggers out there who do make consistent videos, who do have a schedule and who keep on it and keep releasing consistent content for you to watch. A lot of you probably watch uh, other vloggers in my same situation here in Fukuoka or other parts of Japan. Uh, so do I, some of them I might be friends with, who are releasing pretty consistent uh, content along the way, whereas I uh, I try lately, um, try to do something at least twice a month if I can. It's not always been like that. I'd like to get into a, a week by week schedule where it's one video a week. I think that would be great. Hopefully uh, I can do that. But uh, against school and work uh, and still trying to have a social life and sleep and everything else like that. Um, Content creation is definitely there. I've got a lot of videos that are out there. It's just editing them and putting them out and making them uh, you know, entertaining for you as best I can. Even though I know a lot of them are pretty uh, mediocre, I do admit, um, because I tried to tone down the, the sensationalism of what other content creators might be doing, just tried to even it out and show you the real Japan from what I'm experiencing. So kudos to all the creators who are consistent. Uh, you're being an inspiration for me to hopefully up my game a little bit and put out more consistent content. So next is my work visa. So I am working uh, at the moment, uh, not at the moment, I'm at home at the moment, but I'm recording a video, which I'm kind of counting as work. Which, uh... So allow me to just explain a little bit. You might already know this, and I've said it before, that under a student visa, um, I applied for it last year, got it. It lasts for 15 months, even though my course is one year, uh, it's over now, but my actual visa doesn't expire until December 31st of 2024. So the last day of this year, uh, I have to leave because the visa will expire. Can't stay in the country if you don't have a visa. Can't work as well. I can switch to a visitor visa, which will allow me to stay. So it's not like I absolutely have to leave and I can never come back. It's just I can't work or study under a visitor visa. Well, you can, you can actually study short term. So given that I have been working since February, my goal uh, long term has always been to be and stay in Japan. And thankfully, I was able to uh, secure a job, which I'm still in today. And at this moment, my work visa is being processed. So it came a little delayed. Obviously, I wanted to apply for it much earlier when school was still in so that when school finishes, I can just do the change of status from student to work visa and just have that roll over, like kind of right into the next. As soon as graduation was over, I could just resume working full-time or begin working from part-time to full-time. However, there was a bit of a delay with the company and the application process. So right now, when school ends, if you are working, you cannot work when school is over. You have to be enrolled in a school under a student visa in order to work part-time. If you're not enrolled, you cannot work. You have to stop. So if you plan ahead, you can actually change to a designated activities visa, which allows you to still work only part time, but at least you can still work. 
Whereas the full work visa allows you to work full time and have benefits and all that other kind of great stuff. But right now, since the application came a little late, uh, it's in process of being applied for. You can only apply for one. Uh, you can't apply for a designated visa and a work visa at the same time. I might make a video about that as well because it happened to me. That's why I'm not working at the moment. So I'm literally waiting. I'm in standby mode. I'm in yes to me. I'm days off. I'm on holiday <laughs> vacation. Uh, I can't work at the moment. I'm not studying. I have no school. I have no job. I have no dog. But anyway, I am enjoying this light uh, vacation after school. Uh, it's nice to just have a little bit of a break. So when the visa comes in, I can resume full-time working. So thankfully uh, to my employer who is sponsoring my visa, uh, the work visa is being handled by an agency at the moment in Tokyo. And once it gets processed, I'll be able to work, which should be in a few weeks or so, fingers crossed. So without making this video too long, I did want to offer that update to you. Thank you again for allowing me to reach 1,000 subscribers. It really means a lot to me. Onwards and upwards, gambari masho. Let's do our best. But I will have another video coming out just after this one, uh, which is going to offer a separate kind of update compared to what this video is about. So stick around for that one because it's just going to be recorded right after this. I'm going to have the same shirt, same background, same everything. Just uh, stay tuned for the next one. But in any case, thank you so much for watching and on this journey so far. Stick with me. It's going to be fun. Arigatou gozaimasu.